Excuse me. Mm. Yo. What is happening? Y'all come on in the room and let's see what's popping. What's up, Josie Wosey? What's up, y'all? Y'all hop on in the room. I ain't gonna be on too long. Just wanted to check in with everybody. What's up, Oprah's ex? Oprah's ex. <laughs> what's up, man? God Body Fit Club. So what's up, man? It's, it's late. It's 11.30 out here in L.A. I'm chilling, just checking in with you guys, seeing what's popping. I hope you guys got your tickets for HC5. HC5 is going to be in theaters nationwide in a couple of weeks. What's up, making me great? You about to go to sleep? I ain't going to keep y'all on too long. But yeah, I'm out of Twitter jail. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of Twitter jail, so I'm good to go. What's up? Shout out to Alabama. Shout out to everybody down there. <coughs> Excuse me. What's up, Chicago? Um, HC5 is going to be, I think, at the Century Theater out there in Chicago. So y'all need to go to hiddencoloursfilm.com. What's up from Okinawa, Japan? What's up? You in the military? Asia say are you in the military or are you over there with an Asian zaddy? What's up, court court? Checking in from China. A lot of a lot of people over there in the Orient tonight. What y'all doing over there? Y'all over there teaching English? What's up, um Ellie Ford? Shout out to Louisiana. Yeah, um but if you want to see what city HC5 is playing in, go to hiddencoloursfilm.com. Go to hiddencoloursfilm.com and you'll see what city the film is playing in. There you dig? Let me adjust my cam. So. Ah, sorry, I'm just adjusting my cam. What's up in Syria? Now, your ass ain't in no Syria. I think it's in Syria, Georgia. <laughs> What's up, Boston? Buck breaking. Yeah, we're going to start buck breaking in a couple of months. Um, what's up, Miss Kazan? Shout out to Brooklyn. So, yeah, we got the New York showing that's going to be on Friday, the 2nd of August. That's going to be the showing in New York. We got two big showings out there. So go get your tickets for that. Shout out to Dallas. You know, definitely love for Dallas. So we got a couple of good showings out there on the first. All my L.A. people, do I have anybody in L.A. tonight? We're going to be at the Area Fine Arts Theater in Beverly Hills on Wednesday, July 31st. So that's in a couple of weeks. That's a little over a week, actually. So, you in L.A., that's what's up. I want to see you in the house, man. Yeah, I heard about that ship with J.P. Morgan. That J.P. Morgan ship that was loaded with, with dope. They said it was like, what, a billion dollars or something? A billion something worth of dope on that damn boat. So, am I going to Area 51? Yeah, I will be at the one here in L.A. Yeah, I do need to go on the Breakfast Club. Whew. I'm yawning in y'all faces, but I do need to go on there. I need to holler at them and get on there. I just, my schedule is crazy. And plus, the movie is, I probably won't have time now because the movie is right around the corner. I probably go on there when I get back from Europe because right after the screening here in LA, I'm going right over to Europe. I'll be over in Europe for a week. I'll be over there. Promoting, you say Greece had an earthquake? Okay, I got to be careful over there. Check out your series, Black Americans Making Their Mark, Stories Abroad. Okay. 
Yeah, that vaccine clip. We put up a clip talking about vaccine, and that already has a lot of people's panties in a bunch. So that vaccine clip that we put up, I, I if you go to my YouTube channel, um, Tariq Radio on YouTube, I put up a, what is it, a two or three minute clip from Hidden Colors 5 where we were talking about vaccines. I, I, I think it's like a, it's around two minutes. It's only a real short clip. And there's a lot of people who are butt hurting. You know, people are debating back and forth. I'm like, oh, damn. Okay, damn. If y'all, if this is causing such a stir, this little two minutes, well, wait till y'all see the whole movie. What are my thoughts on ASAP Rocky? You know what's interesting? Jada Pink, and shout out to Jada. Love Jada. She posted a video of, I don't know if this gentleman was a representative of Rocky ASAP, but he was saying something um, about we need to rally behind trying to free Rocky. And he was talking about, well, yeah, a lot of people are criticizing Rocky because of his past comments. But the dude was trying to kind of he was trying to explain his way about it it just it just didn't really sound right yeah based on last year much respect bro but yeah man the dude was trying to um um explain how we should support Rocky, even though Rocky and ASAP Rocky and said a bunch of greasy stuff about Black Americans, and uh, no, we, we're not really obligated to to put the cape on for Rocky. You know, again, I don't wish any bad on any Black person. I don't wish any bad on him. I don't wish that man to be harmed. I hope he gets home. But according to him, in his logic, that ain't got nothing to do with us. You understand? With his logic, he was the one who wanted to distance himself from racial non-justice and people going to jail and people not receiving justice. He was the one who was an advocate about distancing himself from that. So we're taking a little bit of his advice. You dig? You know, I'm not hearing all that stuff about we got to drop everything. No, we taking his advice. No. Yeah? See, you no, know, y'all can't put people want to put certain energy out. And then when things circle back to them, now they want to be prioritized. That's not how life works, man. Life is like insurance, man. You better pay your premium on a regular, so when you get into an accident, you'll already have your insurance covered. That's what life is about. When you don't pay your insurance and you get in an accident, everybody ain't gonna drop everything and then take care of your medical bills and your house bills and every. See, that's not how life works, see? This is a life lesson. Nobody's going to drop everything and prioritize, dude. He hasn't been paying his premiums. You dig? And our energy is valuable. Our energy is valuable. We can't put all of our energy. That's why black folks aren't co-signing none of this stuff. We can't put our valuable energy behind people who really don't appreciate it and people who've been dumping on us. We want to save our energy for people who ride for us. So we don't owe that brother nothing. Now, we're not trying to, I, no, none of us want that brother to be in jail, but call the white women. You understand? Where are those people in Soho that you were bragging about, right? Where's all the people in, in Beverly Hills? That's who you need to be calling. How come you're not calling the Beverly Hills people? And all the people that give you your lean and all the bitches that you said that you're concerned about. 
Why are you not calling all the bitches and the people in Soho and the people in Beverly Hills? See, this is what I don't like. People try to shit on us and then cape for all these other groups when things are good. But when you get into a tether, you can't call the Soho people and the bitches and the Beverly Hills. You don't call them. You looking at black society, making us, shaming us into prioritizing you. No, no, no. Grip them nuts and hold them tight. Hold them nuts tight. We don't owe you anything. We wish you the best, but we owe you nothing. We wish you the best, but we owe you nothing. Hope you get out, but we owe you nothing. Y'all play this game all the time. People want to pretend to be the special Negro in the room. And then when... White supremacy hits you in your ass all of a sudden. Eyes a nigra. Eyes a nigra. <laughs> Just like <laughs> that movie Queen. Remember the movie Queen with Holly Berry? In the movie Queen, Holly Berry was the mulatto offspring of slave owners, and they had her in the house. And then after slavery ended, you know, she thought she was different. She thought she was. You know, something other than the other Phil Negroes. She wanted to hang with white folks, but white society wouldn't accept her. She kept going around the country trying to be accepted in white society, shunning the the coloreds. And remember, right after slavery and the height of Jim Crow, white supremacists, white society, were they were very violent towards the mulatto class. They were extremely violent towards them because they didn't want them to sneak those mulatto genes into white society. So they were very sensitive about these Negroes who could low-key pass. So she kept in the movie just getting decimated and smacked around by a white supremacist society. Then she ran her ass up in a black church so fast she humbled herself, ran into the black church crying, I was a nigra. I was a nigra. I was hungry. I was a nigra. You dig? So don't come running to us screaming, I was a nigra, after you done talked all that shit. You dig? No. We cool. We, we cool in the gang on you. Remember, you, Rocky, he's Bayesian. That's what he said. He said he's Bayesian. Well, damn it. Get to calling Rihanna and call all those riders out there in Barbados. Yeah, call them. How come you ain't calling them? You dig? No, I'm not. We ain't obligated to do nothing. Call Rihanna and all the people in Barbados. We're not obligated to do nothing. But wish you the best, brother. Yeah. See, that's how we, we got to be on code all the time. We got to be on code all the time. Yeah, call. yeah and what, what's funny, man, how come all these, these Negroes be out here caping for these, these, these white women and these Beckys? They don't ever come to the rescue. Yeah? All these Beckys niggas be laying up with. Boy, they, they never come to the rescue. Where all these white women these niggas be fucking? They be laying up with all these white women. These white All these white women these niggas be laying up with. I haven't heard a word from them, by the way. You notice that? They stay on their code with their folks. I haven't heard a word from them. Yeah? But it is what it is. Yes, and the fat Becky. So yeah, 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 man. So we, we, we saving our energy for ourselves. That's why my last broadcast was about saving our energy. There was, um, what's that? I, I tweeted something tonight. What's that politician, the Hispanic politician Castro? I think that's his name. He's putting together some legislation to close the wealth gap between the dominant society and Hispanics. And he put this legislation together and 
I want if you all follow me on Twitter, go to my Twitter. It's the last tweet I made. I retweeted him. Castro, I think that's his name. And he has a legislation. All the word Hispanic is all through it. There is no black and brown. Yeah. There is no minority. His legislation don't have people of color. His legislation doesn't have disenfranchised. It doesn't have low income. It says Hispanic. Joaquin Castro, that's his name. Joaquin Castro, yeah. It says specifically Hispanic. Joaquin, Joaquin, Joaquin Castro, okay. Yeah, it doesn't say urban. See, when it comes to their policies, there is no black and brown. I want black folks to don't ever use that term again. I mean, the language is strictly for Hispanics. Whenever they come up with policies, Hispanic politicians, they never, never, never use black and Hispanic when they're with their people. But almost every, not even almost all of the black politicians are running around here talking about some black and goddamn brown. Nobody else does that. Nobody includes us in nothing. The minute somebody says black and brown, who's a politician, shut them down. Stop them immediately with that black and brown thing because it's a, it's a non-issue. It's fiction. It doesn't exist. There is no black and brown coalition. It's not. That's not to disrespect Hispanics, by the way. I'm cool with a lot of Hispanics. But let's be real. There is no coalition, and there has never been a black-brown coalition. There is no black brown coalition. It's one sided. It's basically black people fighting to uplift the Hispanic community, which is what we've always done. It has always been one sided. You can look out throughout the whole history of Hispanic people in the Western Hemisphere. Black people have always, always fought for them and elevated them. It has not been the other way around. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm talking from, I'm talking history. I'm talking about from the beginning of what a Hispanic is in Latin America. In Latin America, really the origins of it, you, you had African people helping to create the origin of Latin America, by the way. See, the, the myth that we have is that Latin America was basically the Spanish came over and got with the native Indian people, but history always leaves out the Moors and the black people that came over with the Spanish. Black people have always been over here with the Spanish, and it was black people introducing a lot of the culture, and it was black people who were fighting imperialism. These are just facts, and I can just break this thing down from top to bottom, but if you listen to my broadcast, you will hear this, and we've always fought for the freedom and the dignity and the independence of the so-called Latino or Latin American community. Black people have done that. There has never been a mass movement of any Latinos helping black people. That's just a fact. That's a fact. That is a fact. So there is no coalition. It's just basically us caping for everybody. And that's the thing. Well, that's what I don't like after we've done all this stuff. Now, I'm telling you, when you look at Latin American culture, black people have always saved people in Latin America. It is the black people saving them all the time. And then people turn around and try to practice the same anti-black racism. After we then protected these people and, and helped fight for their independence. So enough is enough. 
And I want black people to stop that bullshit. Stop that black brown shit. We think what we're going to lose something. See, you think you're going to lose basically exotic sex because see, that's one thing. Negroes love exotic sex from Latin people. And that's one thing we got to learn how to stay mackish with our sexual desires. See, we let our sexual desires get us caught up in a quagmire. You dig? What's up, Raziel? Um, if they're trolling in the room, let them talk, you know, because this is some real talk right here. We, we, we got any suspected white supremacists in the room here. Talk to me. Let me know what's on your mind. If we have any suspected white supremacists in the room, let me know what's on your mind. Of a black president in Mexico. Yeah, the, the dude who got Mexico its independence was a black man named Vicente Guerrero. Now, he was a very dark black man. Everybody knew he was black, but what they try to do, they try to lighten him up a little bit. But yeah, he's a black man. Everybody knew he was black. I mean, they, they would actually make fun of him by calling him um, El Negro. That was his nickname because he was so black. Yeah. Corrosive transvestoid. Okay, all right, I'm looking at you. You say the Moors sold out the black race. Well, no, 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 no. Well, the Moors, let's, let's look at the terms here. Let's look at the terms. Because we think that the Moors are a specific group of black people. And Moor was a term used for all black people. Okay, Moor, there's no such thing as Moors and black people. Um, the term Moor was used to, it was a descriptive term. It, it, it means black. So it, it just, yeah, it means black. And the black people who were pushed out of Spain during the Reconquista, when they went back down into Africa, there were cultural differences. And you know, they began to attack some of the native African people which was, and, and let's be very clear, there was already infighting and tribal warfare going on in large numbers anyway, so that just kind of added to it. You yeah. did? Speaking of the Washington Moors, America, but yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, remember, black people, and I talked about this recently, um, documented, the first documented instance where there were African people here. They came with the Spanish in 1526. Um, a Spanish explorer named Ione, it's spelled with an A. He brought some enslaved black people here. The enslaved black people beat the shit out of him and the rest of the Spaniards and ran them out of here. They were over there in South Carolina, what would become South Carolina, and they ran them out. So the African people, the black people, were really the first foreigners who had a documented permanent settlement here. Those black people mixed in with the Native Americans over there in that South Carolina area. You understand? So when other explorers start to come through, DeSoto and all these folks, they, they saw these people. They were still there. They they mixed in and they became the, the Washita and... Um, um, some of them actually became the Gullahs. They were mixed in with a lot of people. Some of them became the Seminoles. You respectfully disagree, Miss? Okay, that sounds like one of the Bussy Brothers right here. Miss Sweetie, you're one of the Bussy Brothers. I can tell. That's one of the Bussy Brothers right there. You're, you're too obvious, by the way. Bass Reeves. Yeah, Bass Reeves. We talked about Brother Bass Reeves in, um, I think, Hidden Colors 3. It was a black dude named Bass Reeves who was a, um, a bounty hunter. And he was out there in Oklahoma. And I, was, I, I think Bass Reeves became a sheriff, but this brother was, he was catching outlaws and villains and he actually became the um he was the 
inspiration for the Lone Ranger character. That's the real Lone Ranger. And that's another thing. A lot of characters that we hear about were based on black people. Bass Reeves was the Lone Ranger. That's why the Lone Ranger had that black mask on. He was the Lone Ranger. Yeah. Yeah, look that up. He was the sheriff. Yep, Bass Reeves was the Lone Ranger. Who the fuck is that? Okay, what the hell is that? You scared the shit out of me back there, Lexus. Lexus, what are you doing? I thought it was a goddamn poltergeist in the back. Lexi, what are you doing back there? Go crazy as cat shit. <laughs> the hell you doing back there? <laughs> 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 Y'all see her ass. I'm like, I'm thinking I'm tripping. I'm like, is some shit moving back here? Is there a, um, a cat burglar? Who? That is Lexi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a cootie cat burglar. <laughs> I'm like, shit, you sneaking around the house like a rapist. <laughs> Man. But, but again, we're talking about Bass Reeves. Yeah, you did. We're talking about Bass Reeves, who was a sheriff out there in Oklahoma. But, um, yeah, man, there's a lot of stuff that, um, that that we created that other people take credit for. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that uh, we created that they take credit for. It's 3 a.m. in Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta. I showed her wearing a bra. I, I can't see. I didn't know what she had on. Yeah, Bass Reese was badass. Yeah. But, um, my wife is, yeah, yeah, she is. She's a fly thing. Fly, hottie, Thomas Edison. Yeah, Tom, I talked about Thomas Edison stealing people's inventions and putting his name on it. They were very good at that. Yeah. Miami, Bahamas, shout out to the Maya. To Miami. Yeah, y'all up hella late. Hope y'all up late with y'all tickets to um, get Hidden Colors to go see Hidden Colors 5. Yeah? The free Larry Hoover. Okay, y'all just saying anything, man. What's up in Peoria? What's the, speaking of Larry Hoover, what's that, this, that young rapper Tay something this dude, they didn't convicted this dude for murder. Young dude. And they got, it was, is it Tay K, something like that? He had a little, he had a song that was buzzing called The Race. And um, yeah, this little dude from Chicago, he, he had a couple of murder cases. Tay K, yeah, he's young dude. How is this dude? Because he looked like a, a baby. How old is that dude? But yeah, they got this dude. They said he's going to get five to 99 years or something. And that's just on one murder case. And there's another case that they're going to um, try him for. So I'm like, dang, he's 19. Okay. Yeah, and he's from Chicago, right? He's 17. Okay, he's, okay. Some people say 17, some people 19. Yeah, five to 90, 99 years. He's 19 now. Okay. He's from Texas. I thought he was from Chicago. He murdered two people. Man, my thing is this. My thing is this. You got people out here who won't get at these alt-lice terrorists. 
they won't get at them after these folks target your families and you know these alt lice people are having marches and they they doing all types of stuff. So these dudes won't get at the alt lice because they're scared. You know, oh Lord, I, I, I can't do nothing. I'll go to jail. But then you, you know, cats be out here bucking on other black folks and still getting the same ninety nine years. Yeah, that, that that's just besides me. The album Beyonce put out sounds pretty good. She used a lot of African art. Okay, I gotta check that out. We um, we actually saw The Lion King tonight. We saw half of it. We left because you know my kids were in the theater acting up a little bit, so we just went on and left. But it was actually the kids liked it. The visuals were very good. So right when Beyonce's character came on film, we only saw a little piece of that. That's when Simba and Nyla grew up. You know, so we, uh, I'm going to get the kids. A lot of folks are, are giving it bad reviews. My kids liked it because they like animals. So I, I, I took it, took them to go see it because they love looking at animals. So, but yeah, like I'm saying, man, um, you know, cats out here, you'll, you scared to, to, get at folks who harm your family some of these alt light people who harm your family you won't do nothing to them because you're scared of them 99 years but then you go buck at another brother or a couple of brothers and still get those same 99 years it's, it's insane it's insane I know Elijah Cummings look damn near just like John Lewis they got the same look Yeah, kids are very easy to please. Yeah. What's up, pumpkin pie? That sounds like a fake name and a fake profile. What's up like that? Pumpkin pie, that sounds... <laughs> That sounds like a fake screen name. Okay, he ain't shoot a brother. Okay, I don't, I don't know too much about the details of it. Am I coming to HC5 in San Diego? I won't be there personally, but the film will be down there. And yes, it will be in Houston. Yeah. Say so we need white nationalism. Why do we need white nationalism? Until black people lose their fear. Yeah, yeah. I should come to Raleigh. I won't. I can't be everywhere now. That's the thing. People be wanting me to come to all these cities. And I can't, you know, all the, the, the showings are basically going to be on the same day. So I'm going to the one out here. And that's going to be on the 31st. Yeah. Tay K from Texas. Oh, I could have sworn that dude was from Chicago. Okay, y'all. You got your tickets for Philly? That's what's up. Go to hiddencolorsfilm.com. Hiddencolorsfilm.com. Yes, I heard of Amos Wilson. Yes. No, ain't going to be no Mac Lessons 2.0. You got your tickets for Norfolk? That's what's up. And y'all don't be sneaking food in the theater either. Y'all buy popcorn and hot dogs and nachos from the from the movie theater. Y'all don't walk off in that bitch with a big ass Chipotle burrito hidden in your purse. Don't be doing nigga shit at the theaters. All right? Y'all be on your P's and Q's when y'all go see my movie. All right? <laughs> y'all don't be showing out and y'all take a lot of pictures I'm gonna, but don't don't film the movie with your goddamn iPhone I mean just take pictures of the audience and the crowd and showing everybody having a good time yeah. 
Yeah, don't y'all don't be sneaking in no goddamn Chick Fil A nuggets all in your purse. You know, doing all that. I wanna, cause people are gonna be taking pictures, and I'm gonna be clowning. So you on a budget, you gotta sneak some snacks in, nigga. Take your ass to that concession stand and get a twenty dollar bag of popcorn and stop fucking around. <laughs> St. Louis, yeah, the movie's gonna be out there in St. Louis. Man. So I hope everybody got their tickets. This is a must-see movie. You guys are going to really enjoy it. This is, I'm telling y'all, this is the most important film that you will see. Because we're going heavy. So you're not moving from your seat. Yeah, that, yeah you're going to be locked to the screen, man. You, you're going to... You're not gonna want to move. You know, you're gonna you're gonna hold your urine. You're not gonna want to move because you you feel like you're gonna miss something. It's so much information coming so fast. That's the great thing about these films, man. There's a lot of information that comes fast. You just told your lady not to get offended. Is she um, white or Hispanic? And by the way, you guys can get the bundle of Hidden Colors one, two, three, and four at hiddencolorsfilm.com. All right, hiddencoloursfilm.com. The film is an hour, no, it's two hours and 15 minutes. So your lady is Mexican, okay. If she, I, she, a, a lot of them identify as white, so they might get a little offended. They might get a little offended. And, you know, Shahrazad Ali talks a little bit about, you know, interracial relationships. So it's, it's some heavy stuff. Yeah, so she might do some white splaining after the... Let me tell you something. Doing films like this is... There's a lot of difficulties that come into play because in the industry, you have to get certain technical things done with movies, meaning you got to get things edited, then you got to get things the DVDs mastered and then you got to get the audio done and then you got to get it, um, you know, put on DVD and Blu-ray. So you got to do a lot of little things. And unfortunately, we don't, black folks don't own a lot of the sound production places and the DVD mastering places. So you got to, you know, I got to give the stuff and have people in the dominant society work on that aspect of it. And I'm always weary because sometimes this stuff, it, it, it's a, it offends certain people and they'll try to sabotage stuff. They'll do little passive aggressive things to kind of sabotage. So I got to be very careful sometimes about where I get, I'm, I'm, I'm very protective of you know how I do things. Tom Thompson, okay. Tom Thompson said Africa is a shithole. Okay, we well, don't talk about Africa. And by the way, Tom, I'm not from there. I'm from here. I'm I'm from America, buddy. Genetically, I'm African, just like genetically you're European. But culturally, I'm American. So you talking about another country or another continent that. I'm culturally, culturally not a part of and have not been a part of for a few centuries. That's not too offensive to me. But go off, Tom. You try your best, okay? You then? Yeah, Tom might be one of the bussy brothers. Yeah, you over here talking about a continent that I don't live on. So what you trying to say? Yeah, it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, that doesn't offend me. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're bright enough. You're living in my country. So we're bright enough. 
Yeah, they always trying to get attention. Yeah. We just had a child and named him after me. What city you in, Lady Missy? You're like, what's up, Tasha or nothing? Where's Tom? Tom, get back up in here. Yeah, because it's always a, a, a man a supremacist who's getting offended by the truth. That's a, which which one is a fake account? I know Tom is a fake account, but is Lady Missy a fake a fake account too? All right, listen, listen. Missy might be a bussy brother. It, hold on, let me get Missy on here. I think Missy might be a bussy brother. Hold on. Let's get on, Missy. Lady Missy. Let's see. I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were a pussy, brother. Get out of here. Get out. I knew it. There you go. I knew it. I, I knew it. I can tell his accounts now. I can tell his accounts. I can tell. I, I knew it was a pussy, brother. <laughs> <laughs> told y'all so you, once you learn the patterns of some of these white supremacists what's up cookie I see you in here cookie my homegirl cookie from Chicago is in here but yeah I knew it was a pussy brother I knew it was his dumb ass when they name the child after me get the hell out of here when they say something incredibly stupid <laughs> What's up, Oshun's daughter? How are you, dear? I know. Is he trying to wear blackface? What was that he's trying to do? What city you in, Oshun's daughter? It looked like he had a little bussy sauce on his face. Yeah, yeah it's sold. The Atlanta showing at 7 o'clock is sold out. There is a 10 o'clock showing in Atlanta. And you guys can get your tickets for that. It's a 10 o'clock showing in Atlanta. Well, there's a lot of y'all in here. There's 500 people in here. And it's like in the middle of the night. What y'all ass is doing up this late? What's up, Savvy? You're in Philly, but you're in Maryland now. That's what's up. Love you too, Oshun's daughter. When is ISM coming back? We're going to be back on ISM July 30th. Y'all tune in. Bri is going to be back from the jungles. Bri is over there in Bali living her damn best life. Bri is in waterfalls. Bri is in trees. Bri is out there playing with, with monkeys. Bri is out there doing it in Bali. She's been out there for damn near a month. Bree is out there living her best life. Yeah. R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle, yeah. But um, it better be a two-hour show. Yeah, we're going to have a good comeback show. Say she got flued out. I'm gonna make yes, I'm definitely gonna make a new social app. We need it. We need it. Yeah, Bree's out there sipping herbal tea. You know. <laughs> she let her edges grow out. She's doing it. Let's say Bree's looking snackish. All right, yeah. You know, put your bed in. What I do a lecture in Tulsa. I, yeah. Nipsey and Rizza conspiracy? What what the hell is that? What are y'all talking about? What, what that don't make no sense. What, conspiracy for what? Have not seen the new Shaft movie. Have not. Where can I find that more blacks died under Obama? Hell, look at the stats, man. Look at all the black people who were killed under Obama, man. 
these these state sanctioned racialized murders they were happening under Obama just back to back what's up IG care the kids are doing good when the next casting call don't know yet you're wearing a charcoal mask bussy brother Got to come to Ghana. Yeah, shout out to Ghana. I haven't seen City of Lies yet. There's a movie I want to see on Netflix. Well, yeah, speaking of Netflix, you know, Eddie Murphy, they're talking about um, they're working and negotiating a deal for Eddie Murphy to do a comedy special for like $70 million. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be huge, actually. I think Eddie could get more. You know, I think Eddie could get much more for Eddie to come back and to stand up, even good or bad. People are going to watch that. Yeah, seventy million, but that's that's a low number as far as I'm concerned. That'll be huge to have Eddie come back. You know, that would be huge. That'd be the biggest thing in the industry, and yeah, at least a hundred. Yeah, get a hundred mil at least. You know, I don't know if he needs the money or whatever, but you know, get that last bag. The thing is, Eddie would have to he's been out of the game. He hasn't touched the stage in like over thirty years, right? Yeah, Eddie hasn't touched the stand up stage in over thirty years. So basically, he's gonna have to start over it's basically like he's going to have to become a stand-up comedian again yeah yeah he has to really you to be a comic and i'm, I'm not a stand-up comic but i know it's 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 a lot of work you gotta um kind of work the comedy circuit a little bit to kind of work your jokes out get a feel of the crowd so yeah, you got to work the small clubs. You got to try material. You got to come up with material. You dig, and you know, the Eddie now he's different from the Eddie thirty years ago. Remember, Eddie thirty years ago, he was a young dude. He was a single dude. He didn't have all the children. So you know, he he talked about you know the dating scene and stuff like that, and fucking chicks and all. And, and, so now you got to become a whole different dude now. He has 30 years. Of so what? Yeah, he has to. I think his strong points are just talking about being in the industry, talking about. I saw an interview he was doing with Seinfeld recently. Him talking about interacting with people like Sammy Davis Jr., Michael Jackson, those are the strong points. Those are some of the funny things that he can get. Yeah, he's a grandfather now. I, he still, he actually still got it. Uh, again, I was watching. He need, yeah, he, he can have some people jot some things down. He can get some cats to to bounce some things off of, you know, just like he did with with Keenan Ivory Wayans and those guys, because you know he's got you know rich dude. You sitting around just chilling. You're gonna need some of those, those gunners. Some of those. He should also get some 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 guys out there now, just to kind of bounce some stuff off of. Yeah, he can't be true. He can't talk about the same shit he talked about thirty years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see that Dolomite movie. Yeah, when is that Dolomite thing coming out? Yeah, I want to see when that Dolomite thing is going to come out. Yeah, he yeah he has to warm up. He has to really get out there and you know start working that that muscle again. Yeah.
Yeah, but he can still get it popping. Look, for it's, it's, Jamie is great. Jamie, you know, he can snap back into it. But um, Eric Spears is funny. Yeah, but and Eddie can get back out there and do it for seventy million. Yeah, I I I'll tell a few jokes. <laughs> And if they fail or not, yeah, for 70 million, yeah, that's a bag you don't leave on the table right there. Yeah, for 70 million, you know, this is going to be a huge thing. Yeah, what well, Trump and all that, I, I'm per personally, I don't like political humor like that. Yeah, I don't like when people you know, talk about uh, politicians because that, that kind of dates the material. Like, for example, um, I don't remember him talking about Reagan in Raw or George Bush in Raw back in the day. That kind of dates the material. Say Netflix is using that. Even. No, Netflix is doing big things right now. Yeah, Netflix is doing big things. He talked about Rocky. Yeah, but they're still making Rocky movies, so you know he's talking about Sylvester Stallone, and they still make the Rocky character is actually still relevant. You know, Red Fox material is timeless. That's why I'm, Red Fox had a record called "Wash Your Ass." That's what I, I made a mixtape in the '90s called "Wash Your Ass" because of Red Fox. The Lion King controversy. What controversy was behind the Lion King? Long live Chief Nebus. You say I got the Kobe ball fade. Okay. This nigga looking at my fade. You one of them niggas. All right, my nigga. Where did Tom go? Or was Tom one of the Bussy Brothers? The white supremacist who was in the room. That's play of the all right, bro. Well, and Anderson having Harvard Fest. You know. They said Beyonce. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are critical of Beyonce's acting in the movie. You know, Simba, they killed your father. You know. <laughs> Why you finna go to the elephant grave, Mustafa? You know, so her character the, was the lion sounding like Beyonce. It, it sounded like a chick from Houston. Yeah. Yeah, just her voice. It was just her voice. What's up? Um... Amanzi, Am some of these names I can't get, man. Some of these names. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the the Lion King. If you got children, they'll like it. They'll like it. The visuals are great. It's her voice and accent. Yeah. <laughs> Man, but it was a cute little movie. From what I, I didn't even get to see the whole thing, but it was a cute little movie. Who was it? Who was it? I'm going to lick my toes. Lack not lust. Okay. Any advice on time management? Okay. Okay, lack not luster is troubling. Okay, that might be one of the Bussy Brothers' other accounts. Yeah, I, I can tell it's you, Bussy Brother. Because most people got better things to do than to troll. Oh, yeah, the Bussy Brothers, and that's why I want y'all to learn. These people, they are obsessed with what we do. You understand? And I want black folks to understand that these people are literally obsessed with what black people do. 
It's all they do is study us, follow us around, see what we got going on. Did y'all see, um, what's that, that Chinese lady? She was Miss Michigan or something. And they took her title because of some of her anti-black comments and but but they they focused on the anti-Muslim and other insensitive comments, but you know, they they kind of pushed her anti-black comments to the back, but she said something to the effect of um you know black on black crime and you know, she was on one of she was on that. She was she's a an Asian Trump supporter. You know, she's one of them kind. Oh, there's Tom. Oh, Tom is back. Whites founded this country. Well, there's black people who built it, Tom. That's the thing. It was black people who actually built it and did all the necessary work. You understand? And that's very important. Because if it were not for black people, Tom, you would still be over there in your broke ass country somewhere in Europe smelling like wet doggy, mad, angry, and hungry. You understand? So let's be very clear, Tom. You're mad because you know that if it were not for black people creating a lane for you and your dusty broke family to immigrate to, then you wouldn't have a, a place to come and troll every day and whine about the black people who saved you and your family. You understand that, Tom? And you're all up in our chat room because you've had every law and policy put in place to uplift you, everything in your favor, and you still ended up in a trailer park eating mayonnaise sandwiches and cooking crystal meth on the weekends. That's why you're all up in our mix, up in black business, because you have none. You have no business. You're dusty, funky, and mayonnaise diffused. And you couldn't even make your whiteness work for you. So that's why you're in here hating to try to make yourself feel better. You understand? No, you're not black, Tom. Here you go. That's another thing. Y'all try to pretend you're black online. Y'all be using outdated slang. Yo, 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 jive turkey. I is black. <laughs> So I can say things about black people because I is black myself. Word to the mother, which further shows how trash you white supremacists are as people and as a culture. You did Because you want to have culture, but you, you're, you're too weak and lazy, so you're dependent upon white supremacy. Systematic white supremacy gives you your daily bread. White supremacy is basically socialism. Basically a system in place to uplift weak ass people. That's white supremacy is socialism for weak ass people who can't hold their own. So you need another system to hold your dusty ass up. And then you come up in here whining to us because see, we don't have that. Anything a black person get, we get it on our own merit. And then when you see successful black people, that really chaps your ass. That's why y'all stay up in my mix. When y'all see successful black people who got it popping. You dig? So you have to tell yourself little things. You're a fan, but I don't hate like this sometimes. Pop up. Yeah. Where you at, Tom? We, we want to talk about your history, Tom. Come on back in here, Tom. 
<clears throat> Tom, come on back in here and get some of this work and let's talk about you and your history. <laughs> 